Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I am doing my post Summer Showdown Western Region Power Rankings. I did the APAC region on Wednesday. If you did not see that video, I will link it in the description and in the cards so you can check that out there. It'll also be at the end of the video if you want to watch it after this one, but I definitely recommend you check it out so you can see how I ranked the APAC region. But today, Western region, we're going to talk about it. 13 teams, uh, so let's dive in. Let's talk about it. A uh, little disclaimer is the way I'm doing this ranking is based on where I see these teams going into the final stretch of the season, going into playoffs. So how well I think this team's uh, situated uh, to make playoffs is a big factor for where I'm ranking them, not just necessarily their performances in the summer showdown. I will obviously take that into account, um, but in the situation where you have a team that's leaps and bounds ahead of another team in terms of playoff positioning, that will probably impact their position. Whereas if you have a team who probably will miss out on playoffs, that will hurt their positioning. So with that in mind, let's go, let's jump in and let's start with number 13. No surprise here at number 13, I have the Paris Eternal one win team. They've already made changes to their entire roster. Um, you know, they essentially got rid of everybody um, uh, going into the summer showdown. Brand new roster, only one win so far. They lost to the teams kind of around them that they maybe could have had their wins against. Not really something that you uh, are surprised by based on what this team did. Um, the fact that they kind of blew up their roster, changed their roster. Basically, they're preparing to move to Vegas, and so they made a pretty major change in their roster. Not really a lot to talk about here and take away. They're a team that's rebuilding I don't even know if this roster will survive uh, after this season. I'm sure some pieces of it will, um, but seemingly they're going in a different direction as time goes on, and so no real surprise considering the um, weakest performance of any team uh, in the entire league in the Summer Showdown that they are here at 13. At number 12, I have the New York Excelsior, who despite the fact that this was their best stage so far this season... They still disappointed, all things considered. Yeah, they got to win over Houston, and they got to win over Paris, but they couldn't keep the momentum that they gained from that win over Houston, and then beating Paris isn't really anything to talk about. They're only a three-win team still at this point. Their shot at making playoffs is essentially zero, if not just zero in its entirety. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what their overall kind of position is right now, but... Um, they don't look to be in a very good spot. So all in all, New York, pretty weak team. Nothing to write home about. Nothing to be excited about with this team, in my opinion. They just haven't looked good. They haven't really done anything to make me feel like they are in any great position. And uh, their tournament performance in the summer showdown was pretty abysmal. Uh, definitely, they improved the addition of Ansun J, but I don't think it is enough to get them out of this 12 spot. They sit down here towards the bottom uh, just because they have not really shown anything more than that so far this season. At number 11, I have the Vancouver Titans, who, yes, did have a pretty solid summer showdown. Three and three in the summer showdown, their first three wins of the season, but it was their first three wins of the season. They did qualify for the summer showdown. They didn't perform particularly well in the Summer Showdown, but they did qualify. They did get to take a map off the San Francisco Shock, which is pretty impressive. But really, to me, the thing that keeps them down on this list, as I kind of mentioned at the top of this video, is just their playoff chances. They It took them too long to do anything relevant, and now going into the playoffs and playing in tournament, their chances of making it are very, very slim. Um, they sit at 3-15 and 15 with 4 points. Uh, the next team ahead of them is Boston at 6-11 and 11, uh, with 6 points. And so while the Titans are 2 points behind, uh, they essentially need to have uh, the same record as the Uprising to get in because they're, you know, having the same points but a worse record won't get you in. So they need to have, um, you know, the same record as the Uprising, and it just seems very unlikely for the Titans. They have a very tough schedule coming up uh, in the kickoff class or countdown cup. They have to play the Gladiators, the Fuel, the Rain, uh, the Outlaws, um, the Defiant, and I think they also play a game against like the Mayhem. Um, so 
tough schedule for them going into this final tournament. It seems very difficult uh, for them to gain that ground they would need to pass Boston. So despite the fact that this tournament is very good for them, um, losing to Boston in the end of the qualifiers was a huge loss for them. Definitely hurt their shot at the playoffs and helped Boston's shot. And that, to me, really was kind of the nail in the coffin that kept Vancouver here in the 11th spot. Speaking of the Boston Uprising, they are my team in the 10th spot. I want to emphasize just how big that win by Boston was over the Titans in the Summer Showdown Qualifiers. Had Vancouver won that match, they would be sitting at 4-14 and 14 and have 5 points, and the Uprising would be sitting at 5 and. 13, also sitting at five points. That win for the Boston Uprising was a difference between tied and beating the Titans out by two points. So it was a very big win for the Uprising that keeps them afloat in my power rankings. I don't think they've looked as incredible. Um, I think that moving on from Lori, moving into actually running a more mixed roster could be a very good thing for this team going forward. I thought they looked pretty good uh, from what we saw. But generally speaking, it was a very big win for the Boston Uprising that essentially locked up their playoff spot. Their schedule in the uh, Countdown Cup is not nearly as difficult as that of the Vancouver Titans. Realistically, they beat New York and Paris at the end of their tournaments, and they're in. Uh, they really do have a pretty nice, easy schedule that will be big for them potentially getting into uh, the play-ins and the playoffs potentially. So that to me really is the thing that solidifies this uprising spot. They've been more consistent this season. Vancouver uh, has been. They struggled a bit this past tournament, but they managed to get the wins they needed to get, and they find themselves here at number 10 in my power rankings. At number 9, I have the Washington Justice. This team, of course, made major changes to their roster, blew up their roster uh, in a sense, getting rid of Mag, Happy, and... Vigilante, five-man roster, bare-bones roster here. There is a lot of potential uh, behind these Justice players, but with the lack of flexibility, they just do not inspire me with the confidence that I would need to kind of see them be successful. Poor Summer Showdown showing for me really is kind of the nail in the coffin for this team. Are they a decent team? Yes, they're not bad by any means. They beat some teams that maybe you would be surprised by them beating. They lose to some teams around them, but they're not going to get wins over your Dallas's, your Gladiators, your Shocks. Um, those teams are kind of put in the elite echelon of these Western region teams. If Decay is playing really, really well, this team looks really, really good. They have talent around him, but the overall team is just not what you want uh, from a high-level contender. Um, I think they'll make play-ins. They're, they're pretty much guaranteed at this point to get in there, if not absolutely guaranteed. Uh, the chances of them getting past are this might even be impossible, um, considering they have 10 points. Um, I mean, Vancouver could potentially tie them in points, but it's unlikely. Um, so they haven't looked great, but their season's not over. Um, and I think this five-man roster doesn't inspire me with the confidence that they'll go deep in a play-ins run, but I won't write them off just yet. At number eight, I have the London Spitfire. Now, this is where things start to get difficult with where I put these teams in the rankings. London has had a very strong season. They're 11 and 7. Their record is very, very good. Um, they've beaten some pretty solid teams. They've been pretty consistent so far this season. Where I have my issues with London is that they have struggled a lot in tournament play. Uh, and I think tournament play is really, really big. They did get a win uh, over the Toronto Defiant in the Summer Showdown, which I think you have to give them a lot of credit for. But they then lost to Dallas and Florida again in a tournament setting. They can't beat Florida, which to me is a pretty big negative spot on this team. They don't look as good in tournaments as you would kind of want from a team that's been as consistent as they have. And while, yes, they made the tournament and teams like Atlanta and the Gladiators did not, when I view the season as a whole, I think those two teams have looked better. Atlanta beat them when they played in the qualifiers for the Summer Showdown. I think right now uh, I just feel more comfortable with a team like Atlanta than I do for, uh, London. London absolutely could keep playing really well and could definitely jump a ahead of some of these other teams around them. But they just have not inspired me with that confidence in their tournament-specific play for me to feel like they are realistically any higher uh, than some of the other teams on this list. It's really close. It's really tough. But to me, 
they sit here in the number eight spot. At number seven, I have the Florida Mayhem, the team that beat London in the tournament, reverse swept them uh, in both the Summer Showdown and the Midseason Madness. Florida is a very interesting team. I don't think they have had a particularly strong season, all things considered. Um, I think they've been very up and down and very rocky, but they have had some pretty good tournament performances where I did not expect them either time. Clearly, I'm underrating the Mayhem. The Mayhem know what they are. They know what they're good at. They may not run a lot of meta compositions because meta compositions are not necessarily in their strengths all the, the time, but they know what they're good at and they run it and they run it well. Um, they don't feel as confident with the, the main support, you know, double main support compositions, but they really looked good with the double flex support with RuPaul and uh, Sir Majed, and that worked for them. And I think that's one of the things about the Mayhem that I really, really appreciate and I respect. I don't feel great about them going up against some of the top teams in this region, but their consistency against London is a, a good sign uh, in my eyes, and I think that they have the potential to get upset wins against some of those teams ahead of them. I don't think they would do much more than maybe kind of get uh, an upset win over some of the, the lower end teams in that kind of top tier, um, you know, or those other middle of the pack teams that I think they could beat. Uh, but right now, I don't think that they are going to be a really top level, top of the top team. I think they're certainly a lock for the playoffs. I think that they have that locked in. Um, I would be surprised if they missed out on the playoffs. Uh, but right now, I would put them on kind of the lower end of those Western region playoff teams. At number six, I have the Atlanta Reign, who, as I said, yes, they struggled uh, in this tournament cycle. They did not have a great look. Now, they did look better as time went on. They improved their roster. They built upon their roster. Um, it was a very big push for this team, of course, to acquire Vigilante, have speedily come of age for this roster to look better. Uh, they unfortunately had to play the Gladiators when they started getting better towards the end. They were working a number of players into their roster towards the end, which is, I think, a big part of why um, they didn't look as good um, as you kind of would have hoped from a team with the uh, tournament uh, experience of this one, the kind of level of play we've seen out of them. Little lackluster. But going forward, I feel very good about them. They've been a very high-performing team in tournaments. I would be surprised if they dropped out of the top um, level of teams. I believe in the standings right now, they are seventh, so they're not a tournament team necessarily, uh, but I absolutely would not be surprised if they go on a great run in this final tournament, get in that top six, and look pretty good. I feel very confident in this team. I think they're a very strong, solid team. Um, to me, haven't seen enough weakness from them to feel bad about them, so I have them here at number six. At number five, I have the Houston Outlaws. The Outlaws have been a pretty good team all season. They've been performing relatively well in the regular season. Their tournament performances have not been the worst, but they haven't really been the best. Um, they've lost to a lot of those upper-level teams. This most recent tournament, of course, got knocked out by the Toronto Defiant uh, in Toronto. So, you know, what can you take away from that? Houston, I think, is a solid team that just doesn't have the depth uh, and just high-level talent that I think will carry them across uh, to the end of the season. Uh, I really like Pelican. I think Pelican's been a fantastic player all year, um, and Merritt's been great. I think that where this team has struggled a lot more is just I don't necessarily feel as though uh, their support play and tank play is as elite for a, a roster that has Pelican and Merritt on it. Those two players are really, really good, and you want to see more out of them than what we're seeing from them. They haven't had that kind of peak that you would have liked to see from them throughout the season. I don't think they're as consistent enough. They had a pretty you know, rough week when they had those major roster moves with Piggy going and Iris getting uh, traded away. So it's not a team that I think has been uh, exceptional, but they have been consistently good all season. They have very good players that have done incredibly well. Uh, so far this season, and I think that there is a lot of reason to believe that this Houston team is among the best in the region. Definitely contenders to make the playoffs and make a good run, but I don't see them being a championship team right now. I think they're on the outside of that at this point in time, but I do feel very good about where they are right now in the season. At number four, I have the Toronto Defiant, who did have a very good showing in the summer showdown. Now, maybe it was because they were in front of their home crowd 
and they definitely got a boon from that. But I thought that they played very, very well in this meta. I thought it worked very well for them. And I feel like they have been pretty good all season. They're not necessarily the best team in the region by any means. I think they still have weaknesses uh, in parts of their roster. But I don't think they have, they have any spot where they're necessarily bad. I think Hisu has had a great season so far. I think Chorong and Twilight, arguably the best support line in the Western region. And arguably one of the best ones in the league. Where I think they do have some kind of lackluster uh, aspects on their roster is I don't necessarily think Hotba or Muse are exceptional tanks. They're solid, safe choices that I don't necessarily think are going to win you games. I don't think they're necessarily going to lose you games either. They're just kind of there. They have an impact, but they're not high-impact players. And I thought, although had a fantastic tournament in the Summer Showdown, but on the whole this season, I haven't really been the most impressed by uh, Aldo and Finale. But... They have shown that when this team is in a meta that they are comfortable in, they can take it to pretty much every other team in the region. And so for me, great showing out of them in the Summer Showdown. I think that they deserve a lot of credit for what they've done. I think they've been pretty solid all season. They've been consistently strong. So for me, Toronto, right now, I have at number four. At number three, I have the Los Angeles Gladiators. And while I think the Gladiators are probably the team in the Western region with the best chance of winning the tournament in the entire western region if they were in the playoffs based on the fact that they had two incredible tournament performances earlier in the season my problem with the gladiators is of course that they didn't even make the summer showdown the meta wasn't great for them and, and we've seen that they struggle in a meta they struggle to adapt I thought there were things about the team that fundamentally looked pretty weak um but when they got things together, they looked much better. I thought they were kind of slow to make the change to space and slow to adapt to that, which I would have liked to see earlier from them, um, because I think that was probably the smart thing to do would be adapt uh, when you kind of see things aren't working. Uh, so for me, the Gladiators are certainly a team that have the potential to win it all. Happy getting added to this team is such an incredible addition that I think will be a very huge boon for this team and will make them play a lot better. But the thing that keeps me on the lower end of the thing uh, with this uh, team, keeping them at number three instead of putting them higher, is just that they did not make the Summer Showdown, and that to me is a tarnish for what they've had so far this season. It's hard to be the best team in the league or in your region and not even qualify for one of the tournaments. As great as they've been, they had a rough, rough Summer Showdown. It's tough for me to say that they should be above the two teams that were finalists in the summer showdown and haven't missed a tournament yet this season so as much as the gladiators have been my personal favorite team to watch in the western region i think they've looked the best so far this season they did not inspire much confidence in me in the summer showdown and so they take a hit dropping down to number three and number two i have the san francisco shock and i have the shock here based on their regular season performances and their tournament performances as well um I don't think they've had the best tournament performances. I think they've looked relatively lackluster in the kickoff clash. They looked good in the midseason madness and the summer showdown, of course, getting second in both of those. Their qualifications have been where they have been really lights out. They have lost one game in the regular season, and that means a lot when you are going for the, the championship, the title, whatever. I don't think they've looked great in tournaments. I think this team has a problem where they rely too heavily on proper and I think it has cost them tournament games when the best teams in the league know how to exploit every tiny little weakness. As good as proper is, when you go up against the other teams that are as good, if not better than you, it's really hard to find value when your one win condition is getting shut down and getting stopped. And the really good teams know how to do that. Now, luckily for the Shock, there aren't that many really good teams. They've only lost throughout the entire season to the likes of the Atlanta Reign, the Dallas Fuel, and the LA Gladiators. So they haven't really been struggling that much when you consider where they are so far as a team, how where they've kind of come so far this season. They have been fine. They have been relatively good all season. They are not a team to be concerned about. They will be fine in this final tournament uh, cycle as we go into the actual end of the season we get into the playoffs i think they'll be fine but because they have not been able to win one of those championships in this season i find it hard to say that they are the best team 
and the Overwatch League. So right now, I have them in the two spot. Finally, at number one, I have the Dallas Fuel. Winners of the Summer Showdown, runner-ups in the Kickoff Clash. Great performances out of them so far this season. Hanbin playing at an MVP caliber again this season has been a huge reason why this team has found success. They struggled a bit uh, in the hard hit scan meta that we had in the Midseason Madness, which I think is probably where this team's biggest struggle is right now. Edison and Gurio have not had the most uh, electric performances on hit scan, but when they don't have to be the star of the team, the team looks really, really good. It has enabled those players, especially Edison, I think, to have stronger performances when they're not expected to be the guy making all of the plays. That's why I think they look so good in the Summer Showdown, and that's why I think they are a very, very good team and a force to be reckoned with. They had a very good qualifier run in the Summer Showdown and an incredible tournament where they only dropped, what, two maps? Three maps, I think it was, in the tournament. Very good run from the Fuel. Swept the Shock twice in the tournament. Incredible run from them. I think they're playing at a very high level. They found a play style that fits them. They know what to do. They know where they're going. I think Chio is a sleeper Rookie of the Year candidate. I think he has been so good this season. The team looks great. They look really solid. And to me, right now, they are the number one team in the Western region. So that is it. That is my power rankings for the West. I will throw them up real quick so you can see them. My full power ranking, just so you can see. Definitely expect some disagreements on this one. Um, I think there is a lot of things that might be a little less popular. Some of my spots, I think, especially towards that middle area um, is where I might get some disagreements. But hey... Who knows? We'll see as time goes on. But let me know your thoughts down below on whatever I talked about, my power rankings. If you agree with them, disagree with them, whatever, I'd love to hear from you down below. And if you enjoyed and want more videos like this in the future, consider liking and subscribing as your support does mean a lot. That is going to be all for me for today. Thank you all once again. Hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy. Until next time, bye-bye.